Hey guys, it's Carol and thank you for stopping by for my floss tube update. I am on track with my 2023 plans and I am so excited about that. So I'm going to just go ahead and start off. I have my first finish of the year and that is Heartstring Samplery's Coffee Quaker. Here's where it was last time. And here it is, 100% complete. I had indicated that I wanted to get this one done for the first quarter of 2023, so March 31st. And I'm gonna tell you guys, I was taking it to the deadline. I put my final, I did this motif last, final stitches went in, I think my last one was at 11.03 at night on Friday, March 31st. Um, but you know what, it was really important to me to feel like that I was staying on track with the plans because I figured if I let the first one slide, then the entire year is just gonna turn into a mess. And you know what, I really, I forgot how great it is to just be like, oh, I'm done with the project. That feeling of accomplishment is so awesome and I'm glad that I prioritized going ahead and getting this done. I had started it back in April of 2020 and I didn't want it to be going into past three years. So managed to like stay with what I intended. And it's, isn't it just fantastic? It is stitched on 40 count beach brew linen from r, &R Reproductions. I used all of the called for flosses, except there were two, one was grasshopper, one is ruby slipper. I think they're both weeks dye works. I didn't want to, I wasn't feeling the red, I wasn't feeling the green. I went ahead and changed it out to up here, which um, the ones that were supposed to be Ruby Slipper, I changed to Havana from Weeks Dye Works. And then the ones that were Grasshopper, so the green, I went ahead and I changed that to Mocha. And off the top of my head, I want to say that that's a classic color works, but I don't remember right now. Like. I have them all, I keep them all together, it's really obvious, but I always look for the color name, I don't really pay attention to the um, floss maker. Oh well, so it goes. But anyway, I really liked how this ended up tying together. I had mentioned, I think, in the past that I was worried about how this, when it was originally just a not as golden of a tone and a little more of a red, pinkish tone. I think it came out fantastically. I love that they're all brown tones, but they're all brown tones on a continuum. And I feel like the entire thing is just a wonderfully integrated whole. It's a fantastic piece. I did do one change. It is charted for the year to go up here and your initial down here. I did not fit in an initial here. It just wasn't working, so I decided to go with just first and last. But the thing is, the S was gonna be like, leave this huge gap of space over here, and the 23 was gonna be a little tight because when she, it was drafted on oh, the pattern, it says 16, so the one fits really well. Well, the two and the three are a little big, so I just decided to switch them back and forth. I'm not the only one, I've seen a number of these on Instagram as well. So it just, it's a very small thing, but I did end up doing that, but isn't it so cute? It, I love it. I cannot wait to get it framed, put it up in my kitchen. Actually speaking of the frame, framing purposes, I have had this sitting on my mantle for a while and it is actually one of my junior high school pieces. I did this like way back. But anyway, it's got a, um, dark coffee colored frame and so I'm thinking of using this again just it'll I think it's the right idea for going with the coffee theme and otherwise I tend to use black frames but I really I want to keep with that brown motif it just I love it it is such a great project speaking of 2023 plans my stretch goal for the year and what I hope is my December finish is modern folk embroideries the fruit of plenty I have to kind of stay caught up with this one otherwise this piece is going to overwhelm me and there's no way I'll be able to finish so I ended up putting a fair amount of time on it over the course of the last few weeks here's where it was last time This is where we are today. As you can see, I am 25% complete. I have finished the January, February, and March cards. I have not started the April card and it's April 20th. Yeah, I'm not proud, but I will point out, I only got this one done on Monday. 
so that was the 17th and then I decided to take a break because I had been super focusing on this for the last few days. Arlene Solomon, thank you so much for having left the comment on my last video. You asked how long does it take for me to stitch, well say each month of this stitch along, so 1 12th of the project, and the answer is I have no idea. I wish I did. Like it might make all of this a little easier because then I wouldn't be like oh this is clearly meant to, you know, that I can do it as a easy extra to the rest of my stitching maybe this is like if i'm going to do that it needs to be a primary this some of this like right through here has just turned out to be more dense than i realized that april is going because this is coming down here is going to be full of a lot of this so what i'm thinking of doing is over i want to have it done by the end of the month the entire card i have no idea how long it's going to take me so i'm actually going to record the time in hours and see if I can give you a better answer on my next video. But thank you so much. It was a great question. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, in the meantime, it it's, looks amazing. I love this piece. It is fantastic. Um, details, this is a 40 count white vertical even weave. I am doing uh, one thread over two using DMC floss. I think the coverage is coming out great. So um, definitely, definitely highly recommend. A project that I did not get to spend as much time on over the last two and a half weeks as I might have liked, because I definitely kind of fell short of a little like semi goal I'd set for myself, is Heaven and Earth Designs mini interior of Tinturna Abbey. Here's where it was last time. And this is where it is today. So I said mini goal. I was hoping to have this entire fourth, I'll call it row because that would be the way my grid is broken out. We'll call it the, that fourth row. So it's the blocks of 10. I really wanted to have it done. And for a minute, it looked like it was going to happen. I was really just breezing right along with this. And then it didn't. And I don't know why. I think it was, I just, I put it down I never picked it back up. But I actually had to pull this out of the queue snap because I like left it literally as ready to pick up any minute. But that any minute, I think I put it down two weeks ago. <laughs> I know this is just how it kind of goes some days, but I will say I really, really am enjoying this full coverage. It's because I'm using it, it's the mini. Um, if you do it on the recommended 25 count, it's supposed to be like a nine by 12. Obviously, I'm doing an 18 count, so it's much bigger, but I say bigger. I mean, it, I mean it's going to come over to here. I just think it's like this is a really nice way to enjoy doing full coverage without feeling like I'll never finish it. Because even though this has never once been my focus piece, I mean, look, I'm 3,000 stitches into this project. I'm pretty happy with that. So um, I am hoping that now that Coffee Quaker is over and that I would like to kind of get this one a little more into the rotation. When I started the year with my four stated goal finishes for the year, I realized that it's almost like I'm creating this queue of things that I want to get done. And obviously my queue of four is now only a queue of three. So I started idly thinking like, I'm not probably going to do an exact one for one match like, or like when I finish things that I'm not going to immediately I feel like if I finish a mirabilia, it doesn't mean that the new part space in that queue is necessarily gonna to go to another mirabilia. But I was like, hey, I appreciated realizing that I could take the size project that I did and kind of get it done as fast as I did. So I was like, okay, something similar size that's now kind of, we're gonna say it's the bottom of the queue and now maybe to be done by next March. Rosewood Banners, Dreaming of Tulips. Here's where it was last time. And this is where I am today. I had spent, uh, when I finished up Coffee Quaker, it was five days solid of nothing but working on Coffee Quaker. Like I realized five days, by the way, of that level of monogamous stitching is not for me. I guess I'd originally said like, maybe I should start the beginning of March as monogamous March. Well, apparently I finished it that way. And I, when I got done, I needed something totally different. Like I was looking for brighter colors, just, and also not feeling like I had pressure to hit a deadline that I created for myself, but you get the idea. So this one was like that perfect, it was April 1st, 
the weather was finally like starting to look like spring. So I really was just super excited to pull this one out. And the progress I've made is I finished out the structure of this motif that's up here in the corner. I have not finished filling in like here and here, but other than that, this part is complete and I just started you know, finishing a little bit more down here. It's not big, but it just, it felt so good. And I realized like, added it up, I'm 17% of the way they done on this. And I didn't spend that long with it. So it just, it was the thing I needed to have that like total change of pace. It felt great and it's so cute. So like I said, I think actually this one is gonna kind of slide into finished number, like it's now the bottom of my queue maybe for finish next year, but it is so cool. They're all so cool, I love all my projects. I know I say this like every two or three videos, but it's just, I love it. I love, I love the colors on this one. They're perfect. And it's, I mean, spring has been here and spring has actually chosen to hold on longer than normal. A lot of years we go from cold to blazing hot. I have not had to turn on my air conditioning yet. I never get away with not turning on my air conditioning this late into April. So, like I said, just speaking of spring, like, because this one, this one is very much a springtime one. And that's how I feel. I had no idea until I really started paying attention, but I am a highly seasonal stitcher. Now, this isn't about having the word spring in the title of it, or that it has to be super spring themed. But the azaleas are in bloom, the trees are leafing out, like everything just is so bright and there's so much more. And I'm also, it's really, I think, being influenced by the amount of sunlight that I'm getting now. It just, it's everything. So I was thinking about pulling out Winter Queen because I've been having fun with it, enjoy the blues, but it wasn't feeling like the right choice. So I kind of flipped through all of my bags of already in progress projects. And then I realized I was super excited to get back to this Fusilla kit, Summer Symphony. I haven't touched this, I think since last summer. So it was in danger of kind of being like a forgotten project. As soon as I picked it up, it was like magic. Here's where it was last time. And this is where I am now. I, it, I did have to frog right here. Um, I was not expecting that and then I realized I had miscounted my rows and there was no way to fix it. That's fine. I mean, I just ripped it back. It wasn't, I didn't lose that much work for it, but I, I'd be like before, I think I had maybe this green right here, like all this, all this white right here is done. And I started doing the back stitch just because it, the back stitch color is the same color that's used. Actually, this one right here is the medium lavender, which you use right here. So I just kind of realized that I wanted to have some structure to this because otherwise you wouldn't see what's going on with the house. And then so when I started this, I don't want to put it down. I'm loving the color. It's, maybe it's because it's, I haven't actually pulled out the green. It's like funny, I'm like pulling out. They're this terracotta, the purples, they're really reminding me of what I'm seeing like in my neighborhood, walking around or driving, like everybody's flowers. It just, it's kind of perfect. And so I'm really, really having a blast with this. I, and again, this goes back to, apparently I'm very like influenced by the seasons. So when I put it down at the end of summer, it was because it was no longer speaking to me at that point and that's okay. So I just, I'm literally glad that I came back to it. The, I mean, the project is great. Um, it is on a 14 count Ada. I love how, I mean, the Ada basically like it, it holds itself up. Um, the other thing is that I'm really finding that with Ada, Q snaps are amazing. If you go bury back in like my really, really old, um, when I first bought my, like my very first pair of Q snaps, I didn't like them. Maybe it's before you even bought you snaps. I don't know. I have a, like an old thing where I said, I don't know, say I love everything in hoops. This stuff is so stiff because this is from the original kit. So I am holding 30 year old fabric in my hands and they are, um, I just don't like my hoops with this fabric, but the Q snap, perfect. Um, ironically, I don't love Q snaps on linen. So I think it's it really when you're finding like the, the right tool that works for you for what you need. And the other thing is like, I'm using like 
my tiny Q-stamps. I'm using my seven by sevens that I don't normally like, but because this fabric holds itself up so nicely, like around it, I prop it really nicely in my lap and I can still do two-handed stitching with it. I mentioned that um, staying on track. So, Mirabilia Designs, Autumn Queen. I have till June 30th to meet my own, again, self-imposed deadline. And so you think I would made if, you know, put some time in, in April, like trying to front load it so that I'm not doing in June what I had to do in March with Coffee Quaker and, you know, not have to do five days straight if nothing but working on it, almost like it was for my job. Now, I picked it up for the first time in a month yesterday. So I don't have a lot of change on it, but here's where it was last time. This is where it is today. I have not done a huge amount. Obviously, I told you I picked it up yesterday, but I did this part of the cloak right here. And also this right here, she has skin above the top of her dress and it, like the cloak is coming across, cloak or ribbon. There's something happening right here under her hand, but I'm like, okay, well, so we'll say this is roughly her collarbone. Close enough, I think that'll be fine. But I, Realized I probably should be doing some of this like back stitch through here so it's a little more obvious on the edges of her cloak. I have been holding up with doing the like all the whisper right here is in line with what I have and I even got some of the whisper right here. Like I'm trying to do the completing all of this as I go up short of the beads, obviously. Um, I'm gonna do the beads at the end because I stitched this in a hoop, but I think I have a a big enough cue snap that I should be able to get most of the beads done with a um, taut fabric and then only like the stuff at the very bottom will have to be done in hand. That's what I'm hoping anyway. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm gonna be on track to get this done by the end of June. I'm not 100% sold that I will, but I also have two, two months and 10 days so I can, I don't see any reason why I couldn't do it. It's just making sure that I'm able to do some of the other stuff I wanna get done. And like, I have, I don't know, I've been feeling drawn towards non-cross stitch. I know. Doesn't mean I'm not cross stitching, it just means that I have other stuff that I also wanna do in addition to, and we only have so many hours in a day. I mean, anyone does, so. But yeah, I think we'll see how this one looks on my next update, hopefully I'll have a good chunk more progress. So I'm gonna try something new for me. I've never done this before, so please give me a little bit of grace on this, but I'm gonna be offering a giveaway. And the giveaway in this case, it's a used pattern. Yeah, um, this is my copy of Coffee Quaker. I would love for it to move to a home where it can be used to stitch up someone else's fantastic project. And so, because it's a pattern, so it's paper, I am happy to ship this worldwide. So if you're on earth and you are interested in this, please go ahead and enter. I also ask that you be a subscriber. So if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that button. And then leave me a comment saying what your co favorite coffee drink is. Now, to make it easy for me, please use the word coffee when you tell me what your favorite coffee drink is. So if the answer is caramel macchiato, after like say my favorite coffee drink is a caramel macchiato. Um, but I'm just curious, you know, what everybody else, like what kind of coffee they love. Um, my current jam right now is an AeroPress with a single cube of sugar. Like I don't normally, black coffee is not my thing, but this is just like, it's perfect. Just one teaspoon of sugar and it is amazing. Um, so go ahead and share that with me. I will close out the entries noon Eastern time on May 6th. So please enter before then, and I will announce the winner at the first video I post after entries close. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.